Hello friends, welcome back. So today I wanted to do kind of a book talk slash discussion on a book that I read recently and that book happens to be Soundless by Rochelle Mead. Now I have to tell you right off, I gave this book like a 2.75 stars. When it comes down to it, I'll give a brief explanation on what it is and then I'll probably just delve right into spoiler land. So that's why book talks are going to be more spoilery and my reviews I'll try to keep spoiler free. Essentially what this is about, we follow Faye and her sister in this village that they live in. Everybody is deaf in this village and some of them are starting to lose their sight as well. And it, they live on the top of this mountain and so they receive all their food through a pulley system that comes up and down the mountain from a village below. What happens is as people are starting to go blind, they're starting to get less and less food because they can't mind they can't um, mine their rare metals in their mine fast enough. They're starting to starve, they're being cut off, all of these different kind of things. And we so we follow Faye's journey to figure out what is going on because um, she ends up through a series of circumstances gaining her hearing back. And so she uses that to go and save her village. So this is this was a really interesting read. It is a standalone fantasy. Again, I gave this 2.75 stars. And I'm going to get into why, and I'm going to have to spoil to do that. So if you have not read Soundless, unless you really love Chinese folklore and Chinese heritage and that kind of world, I would probably give this book a pass, honestly. I'm going to give you guys a second to go away if, you ha if you're still interested in reading it. If you want to sit here and talk about this with me, hang around. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this book was not only meh for me, it was slightly frustrating. This book did not feel like a fantasy novel at all to me. There is a touch of fantasy right at the end, but outside of that, it's pretty much a fiction adventure kind of story. I didn't really feel like it was terribly fantasy. Then again, I've been reading a lot of epic fantasy recently, and so that might be playing into my thoughts on this. But I have to say that I was disappointed, severely disappointed by this book. One, the way the dialogue was written was harder for me than a traditional dialogue. I mean, it wasn't even like formatted like normal dialogue. It was formatted just like normal paragraphs and reading. And so that got a little difficult for me as the story went on. Well, in the beginning, it was really frustrating. <laughs> And then I just got to a point where I was kind of used to it. I did read this pretty much in one sitting, you know, for the most part, I just read it in an evening. Um, it's about 300 pages, so it's not terribly long. Um, the characters um, were just kind of meh. The storyline itself was kind of meh. I felt like it was kind of a cop-out ending to call it fantasy. It just felt like a Chinese folklore adventure. I think they could have just classified this as fiction, and I probably would have enjoyed it better. When you classify something as fantasy, I go in with certain expectations. And this book fell really, really flat on that. Um, the writing was okay for the most part. I mean, her descriptions of the world and stuff were fine, which is why it was a 2.75, because I felt like it was a slightly below average book, especially when it comes to fantasy. The more I think about it, the more frustrated I get about the book, so that rating itself might actually end up getting downgraded again. Um, originally it was just about a 3, but it slowly keeps becoming more because I'm just more and more frustrated by it. Despite the beauty that is the cover on this book, like I was just so disappointed. The love interest was really lackluster. I mean, it, they could have done a lot more with that. I think she just rushed this book, honestly, is how it feels. She didn't take the time to develop the story, develop the characters like you would typically find in a fantasy novel, and that bothered me to no end. Like I say, I think my biggest issue with this book is its classification as fantasy, because it doesn't feel like a fantasy book other than the ending. You know, to have the mystical creatures come in and save the day, really. I just... It's hard for me to call that fantasy. It is. It feels more like just a typical fiction book with a touch of fantasy. It shouldn't be classified as fantasy. Had it not been classified as fantasy and I went into it not with fantasy expectations, I think I would have really enjoyed it a lot more. Again, as I mentioned before, this might be because I've been reading a lot of epic fantasy. I mean, I've got my shelf of Sanderson here, which I've read a good share of now. And 
I've been reading a lot of that recently, and so I've had these really epic fantasies around with amazing worlds and amazing magic systems and amazing creatures even, and this book just fell so flat. So it might have just been the timing in which I read it, but when it comes down to it, unless you love Chinese folklore, give the book a pass. Period. End of story. If you're looking for a great fantasy book, this is not it. Not it. Period. End of story. Um, I know a lot of people like her other works, but after reading this book, I don't love her writing style enough to go read Bloodlines or Vampire Academy. I just don't. Um, if this is the kind of writing I have to look forward to in those, I just, I'm kind of over that super cheesy YA vampire world. Like, I'm just kind of done with that as well as dystopian societies, but that's a whole different thing. So, if you loved this book, please tell me why. I want to understand. I really wanted to love this book, but I just couldn't. It was formatted weird. I couldn't handle that. The fact that they're calling it fantasy just because these, you know, fictional creatures come in and save the day at the end drives me bonkers. Um, the whole climbing down the mountain thing was, eh. It just felt like an adventure, you know? I mean, maybe if this wasn't... Like I say, I just went in with higher expectations, I think. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I'm like, eh, it's fantasy, it's standalone, it's gotta be okay. You know, the best fantasy standalone I've read recently was Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, and that blew my socks off, five out of five stars. And this, like, really was like half that. I mean, I enjoyed it half as well, because the world wasn't built, the characters weren't flushed out, and it just frustrated me. So, I have to say that I was sorely disappointed. I really haven't spoiled too much for anybody in this. You know, having, um, there's this lady that they come across. I can't even remember her name. Like, outside of Faye, I don't even really remember the characters' names. That's how, like, impressionable they were. You know, they go down into the village, and, you know, there's all this secret stuff going on, and whatever, and blah, 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 blah. They want for nothing, but they... You know, they'll only send so much up to the mountain, and they purposely trapped him there. Like, it's just stupid. It's just beyond stupid. And then, of course, at the end, it's tied up in a magical little bow, and these magical creatures are just cohabitating and living with them now. And it's just like, eh. I'm over it. I'm just over it. So, anyways, those are my thoughts on Soundless by Rochelle Mead. Unless you love Chinese folklore, give it a pass, and that is it for today. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye!